because I'm voting today. I'm very excited. <laughs> I, I, this is the kind of nerd I am. Um, I'm, I'm going to vote early, and I could not be more excited, so I got dressed up for the occasion. Um, so uh, st I'm state rep to the East Street House. Um, I know some of you in the room, but not all, so I'll do a little bit of my bio. Um, I grew up on the west side of Cincinnati, out in Green Township. I'm one of eight kids, a big Catholic family, um, and as an adult, moved into Price Hill, uh, raised my two kids, Sarah and Andrew, uh, in Price Hill. Sarah is now teaching kids with autism out in Denver, and Andrew's working for Legal Aid in New York City. So, very proud of my kids. They've left me alone for the campaign season, so I have time to campaign, and I don't have to worry about neglecting them at the same time, which is kind of nice. Um, and during that time also, uh, when I was raising the kids, I owned a couple businesses also on the west side and also served um, 16 years as a member of the Recreation Commission. So I was a volunteer board member on the board, um, think pools, rec centers, therapeutics, um, senior services, we did all of that work. I served as the president of that commission for the last part of my term and love, love, loved uh, what I did and how we engaged the city in trying to make sure people understood the value of recreation and the work we were doing. So um, eight years ago, I was elected to the legislature um, in 2008, and my uh, service will end at the end of this year. Um, I do want to let you know that in my time as a legislator, I've been able to reach out across the aisle in a bipartisan way to get things done. You may know that the legislature is 65 Republicans to 34 Democrats, uh, so I'm in a bit of a minority, uh, but even in that context, um, I've been able to pass quite a few bills in this General Assembly alone, uh, three of them uh, with a governor that's a Republican, a Senate and a House controlled by Republicans, and I'm a Democrat. So very quickly, um, I, I think it, it illuminates what I'm most interested in. So I passed House Bill 70. It's an education reform bill that talks about uh, community learning centers, bringing services into schools for kids. Uh, it's a public-private partnership model that we were trying to promote statewide. Um, that passed and was signed by the governor um, you know, in this General Assembly. The second one is my Good Sam bill, uh, which was signed recently and just became law and went into effect a couple, of, probably about a month ago now. Um, it provides immunity for someone who calls, uh, who's, who's with someone that's overdosing from heroin. Uh, they, they are also using, but we want them to make the call and save the life. Uh, we heard plenty of testimony, especially from young people who were afraid to call and then lost, the, the other kid's life was lost. And we also heard from parents, and it was, it was, um, it's a very traumatic thing to go through, as you might imagine. But anyway, we passed it, a bipartisan bill, um, so that's on the books. And then the third one was my open container bill. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm a German Catholic. Um, so uh, I did it with Bill Blessing, um, who was a state rep from the Coleraine area. And remember the All-Star Game, uh, and we were all excited about that game being held in Cincinnati. Bob Castellini and the business owners on the banks really wanted an open container district so people could walk around with a cup of beer basically outside and not get arrested. So that was uh, the crux of it. Uh, and we got that thing passed with an emergency clause. Uh, they ended up using a different permit, uh, which was a little frustrating. But, uh, but anyway, we got it done. So, uh, and in the capital budget, is something else that I've worked very hard on. I'm the ranking member on the Finance Committee, so I'm the first woman ever to have a leadership role on finance. And in that role, um, I got together with the Republicans and the Democrats, and we identified the priorities for this region, and $22 million came down um, as investments for this area. Uh, and I was very proud of that work, and I'm very proud of the investments that we made. One was in the Cat House down in the West End uh, to detox um, facility. They're going to double their capacity. And the other t 10 uh, million went to the banks and to the zoo and to music hall and to all the other uh, cultural icons uh, in the region. So that's what I've been able to accomplish as a state rep in a bipartisan way. I'm very proud of my record, as you can see. Um, but I'm running for the county commission. And so what's the nexus, you might ask yourself? What, what's, the, you know, what's similar and what's different? Well, the issues are different. The approach is the same. The approach is the same. It's a bipartisan, full-time, proactive, engaged approach. Uh, I think if you talk to people in my district, which is the 31st House District, I think they would tell you I'm a very engaged state rep. I hold office hours once a month in my district so that people have an opportunity to talk to me about their issues. Um, I, I did town hall meetings early on uh, to ask people about what their concerns were. I would like to bring that same kind of approach, uh, it's full time, to the county commission. But the issues are different. Um, so think MSD. Um, I get to talk about sewers over lunch, I apologize. Uh, but it's one of the biggest issues in the county. And as I knock on doors, people are very concerned about their sewer rates. 
as you probably know, your rates have tripled in the last 10 years. And so the commission had an affordability task force that was put together, multi-jurisdictional. Uh, everybody got to participate in that. Um, and there were expertise uh, or experts at the table. And so they offered some recommendations. Um, this was in May. Uh, the commission didn't act on those recommendations. And so I think there was some frustration about that because it's a, a big issue in the county. Um, after pushed by Todd Fortune, they did take some action, or, or rather said they would do something by Labor Day. They did not do anything like by Labor Day. We pushed them again. I stood with Todd and said, hey, this is a big deal. You need to at least take a look at these recommendations. And so they ended up passing one, which is monthly billing, which I think is a pretty good idea, and said we'd, they'd start to look at the rest. Well, I'd like to know what's happening. Between May and September, if this is one of the biggest issues in the county, why didn't we have a more active response uh, to the recommendations of their own task force? And so uh, I'm concerned about the level of, of lack of activity, I guess it is, on the part of the commission. I don't know that we need to agree with all the recommendations, but I sure think we should have started looking at them in May uh, when they came out. Uh, the structure is also an issue I hear a lot about with MSD. The county owns, the city runs. Um, we have uh, we have a lot of infighting right now uh, with this structure, a lot of blaming, a lot of finger pointing. The county is pursuing the city right now. Um, I have offered maybe a different idea. They have an independent board um, in charge of MSD where the city and the county both appoint. They have representation there because I think we have to recognize that the city and the county have joint assets in MSD and it's going to be very hard to divorce those assets. Never mind the jobs are also um, city jobs with a retirement system built in and it will be very challenging if the county just up and takes over uh, MSD. Uh, and so the, the second thing is Children's Protective Services. As you know, we've got a levy on the ballot. Um, that levy has not seen an increase in two decades, 20 years, not even cost of living. And so it's flat. It's been flat for 20 years. And so the, there was another task force, the uh, Tax Review Committee, recommended two options. One was flat funding, and the other one was a slight increase to recognize that this levy hasn't even increased for inflation, so really they're getting less money now than they were 20 years ago. The commission decided to flat fund, or to offer to you uh, that option, to flat fund. If I had been a commissioner, um, we would have had um, an opportunity to increase that funding. And just to be clear, uh, the commissioners don't decide what that tax is. You decide what that tax is. So the commissioners decide on the rate to offer to the voters, and you all decide whether or not you think that's justified. And these levies generally pass with about 68% of the vote. I have confidence that that slight increase would have passed, and we would have more money uh, for the most vulnerable kids in our county. Uh, remember the number, the volume of kids going into the system right now because of the heroin epidemic. We have fewer caseworkers than we have in, in many years because the state has cut, which I fought against. I lost that battle. Um, fewer caseworkers, more kids. It's a very bad equation. And I do believe that people in this community would have supported a slight increase. They are struggling. And I think it's a real contrast between myself and my opponent. I think we have to have the courage to say, this is important to our community and we need to act now. He has talked about um, talking about this maybe again in two years. I think we need to act now. Uh, and then it brings me to the last issue, which is heroin and the opioid epidemic. Um, we, uh, I, I've been fighting for three years at the State House uh, to try to get it. It's so complicated. We all need all hands on deck. Uh, for this one. I passed a bill a couple years ago about educating kids to the dangers of heroin and opioids. That is in effect now and is part of the curriculum. The second bill was the Good Sam bill. So we've been working on this for a while in a bipartisan way, but we need to do so much more. Uh, and we are under-resourced in Hamilton County and in all the counties in Ohio. So I've called on the governor to release some funds either through emergency mechanisms, through the controlling board, or through the rainy day fund. We have $2 billion in the rainy day fund. Um, if only we could invest some of that down in our communities to start saving some of these lives. And by that I mean the Narcan, I mean treatment, I mean supports. We've got a program in the jail right now where we're, we have literally separated some women. It's kind of like a pilot program. And these women, are they're all detoxing. They're in the jail. They don't have access to drugs, right? They're detoxing. Right now they go back out, they use again, they come back in. Not a very efficient way to do business. And so this unit says we will provide some supports for these individuals so that when they move out of the system, they have a support.
support system to rely on, and it gives them a fighting chance to not use again because they're going back to the same situation from which whence they came, right? And so uh, they're doing it right now. The county commission um, has not supported that financially, and so to my understanding, they're doing it on a volunteer basis. I think that would be a good investment. It's not even that much money, it, but I, I feel like we could really um, help some individuals and create a more efficient system in the meantime. Uh, so those are kind of the top line issues uh, that the county deals with. Um, but very lastly, I will tell you the reason I'm running is not because of what the commission does, it's because of what they don't do. They don't act as a partner in this region. They, 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 don't, they don't engage. Uh, they're, they're not proactive in their approach to county government. My experience as a state rep is, call on me. If I can help you, I will. If we can partner, I will. And we have done this in so many ways, especially when it comes to job creation in our communities, in Walnut Hills, in Oakley, down on the banks. We have been a partner in these pri East Price Hill. I could, I could go on and on, but the county is just not working around in that space. The Port Authority is doing some, but they're under-resourced. Uh, we need to invest there so that we look at this pie and we don't operate in the pie, we try to grow the pie. It's a more strategic, proactive approach to the job. And so honestly, that's why I'm running. Because I, I, I wanna dig in, I wanna spend some time trying to engage as a partner in Hamilton County, as a partner with the city and all 49 jurisdictions that are in the county. So I did go longer than five minutes, I promise. <laughs> <laughs>